Okay, lesson 1.1.6, simplifying radicals and operations with radicals. Uh, go ahead and pause your screen and get down these two uh, vocabulary definitions for us real quick, prime number and prime factorization. Really quickly, um, a prime number is a number who has factors of only themselves and one. So uh, an example of a prime number is like three. The only way that you can multiply two numbers to get three is one times three. Uh, another example would be 11. The only way that you can multiply two numbers to get 11 will be 1 times 11. All right, prime factorization is taking a number and breaking it apart into its factors such that the only numbers that appear in the multiplication expression would be prime numbers. So, for instance, the prime factorization of 6 would be 2 times 3 because 2 times 3 is 6, but 2 and 3 are both prime numbers. Okay, I'm going to give you an example of uh, prime numbers and prime factorization in these first three examples right here. Um, if you take a look, 25 is actually a perfect square, but if we think about it in terms of finding the factors of 25, uh, one of which that's a prime number, we would say, okay, is 1 a factor? Well, yeah, but that doesn't really help me because 1's not a prime number. But 2's a prime number. Is 2 a factor of 25? No. 3 is a prime number. Is 3 a factor of 25? No. Is 4 a prime number? No. Is 5 a prime number? Yes. And it's a factor of 25. So I can just break this down to 5 times some number. Well, 5 times 5 is 25. And when you have a situation like that, that means you have a perfect square when you multiply a number by itself. So the prime factorization for this would be 5 times 5. So that's what that would look like. So then if this is underneath the radical, you just pull out groups of 2. And you say, okay, well, there's a group of 5s. So that would say, okay, I could pull that 5 out front. And if I pull that 5 out front, then that means these are gone and there's nothing else left underneath the radical. So that means that we didn't need this radical anymore. So I could just leave it at 5. All right, if that was a little bit confusing, let's take a look at something like 105. This is not a perfect square, so it's not going to break down like that. So here we go. Looking at this, and we see that it's going to have a factor of 5 because it ends in the number 5. So I'm thinking, okay, what's 5 times some number is 105? Okay, well, that's 5 times 21. Okay, so now 5 is a prime number, but 21 is not. So I'm going to keep trying to break 21 down. So, a prime number that's a factor of 21 is 3. 3 times 7. Well, we got lucky because both 3 and 7 are prime numbers. So, I can rewrite this as the square root of 5 times 3 times 7. So, now I look at this and I say, okay, is there any way that I can pull 5 out of the square root? Meaning, is do I know the square root of 5? Do I know the square root of 5? No. Do I know the square root of 3? No. Do I know the square root of 7? No. So I actually can't pull any of these factors out. Therefore, it can't simplify, and I just return to back where I started, and that is the prime factorization because there is no, or there's no way to simplify that radical because there's no prime, uh, perfect square that's a factor. Okay? A little bit trickier is a cube root, so instead of thinking things multiplying by themselves, we multiply them by themselves three times. So I'm thinking about prime numbers for 48, but at the same time I need to be multiplied three times, so I'm looking for groups of three. So I can break this down as 2 times 24, and then I can go 2 times 12, and I can go 2 times 6, and I can go 2 times 3. So now I'm looking for groups of three, so there's three twos right there. So that's a perfect cube or a group of twos that I could pull out. So I can rewrite this as two times two times two times two times three. And this group of twos can all come out. So that means I can rewrite this as two times the cube root of two times three or two times the cube root of six. All right, again, I know that I'm done when there's no other groups of twos or there's no other cubic in there that I could pull out. All right, we'll do another example for you right here with some exponents. All right, so I'm going to look at this as 
135, and then I'm going to break down the rest of these kind of by themselves. The 5AB out front is going to stay there right now, and then we're going to kind of multiply whatever comes out by those things. So they're just kind of riding along right now. All right, so I'm looking at possibly breaking down the 135 separately from these variables. So I'm going to kind of write them separate. Okay, so 135 is 5 times some number, and actually it's going to be 5 times 7, or 5 times 27. 5 times 27. So then I'm trying to break down 27. Well, that's 3 times 9, and 9 is 3 times 3. Well, lo and behold, I've got a group of 3s right here, so I could pull that out of my cubic. So now I can read this as, instead of having to put this in here, what I have left is this 9 and these 3s and that 5. So I can rewrite this as 5AB cube root of 5 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 9 times A to the 4th, B to the 7th, C. Okay, well, these threes can all come out, and I'll put 3 times 5 times A times B, and then I've got the cube root of everything that's left, 5 times 9 times A to the 4th times B to the 7th times C. Okay, I don't have any more groups of 3, or I don't have any more numbers that are perfect cubes, so neither 5 nor 9 are going to come out. We're going to leave those in. But this is A to the 4th. And remember, a to the fourth is like a times a times a times a. So there's three of those a's that I could pull out. So I could think about this in terms of, because of the cube root and the four, I could think about this in terms of a to the four thirds. And so that would reduce to a to the first and then a to the one third, if I think about it like that. So I could pull this, sorry, a to the three over three, and a to the 1 over 3. So I can actually pull that out and have an a on the outside. Same thing with this b to the 7th. This is, if you think about it in terms of b to the 7 over 3, okay, that's the same thing as b to the 6 over 3 and b to the 1 over 3, and that reduces to 2. So I can actually pull two b's out. So watch what I mean when I say that. So I have the 3 and I have the 5, and now I said I'm going to pull out an a to the 1st, so that's going to get combined with the a to the 1st, it's already there, for an a to the 2nd. I've got a b to the 1st already, and I'm going to pull out two b's, so that's going to be a b to the 3rd, and then I'm going to be left with whatever didn't get pulled out. So I've got a 5, I've got a 9, I had this b to the 1 3rd, so that's going to be just a b, and I got this um, A to the one-third, so that's going to be just an A. And then this C was C to the first power, so that doesn't reduce, was C to the one-third. So I'm going to leave that C in there. So now, if I go to simplify, 3 times 5 is 15, A to the second, B to the third. And then I've got this cube root of 45 A, B, C. And that's the simplest radical form for number four. It's a very involved process, but if you go slow, you make your groups of three, you do your prime factorization, you should be able to handle it. All right. Okay, now we're going to do some adding and subtracting with radicals. You need to keep in mind that we treat these radicals as if they're variables. So, for instance, 5x plus 4x is 9x, not 9x squared. We keep the variable, and we just add the coefficients. So we're going to do the same thing here when we have like radicals. So it's 5 plus 4 is 9, and then we keep the square root. Okay? Now, number 2 is a little bit more difficult because they're not like radicals. So what I want to do is I want to get that to look like that. All right, so I'm going to do some prime factorization and try to break this thing down. All right, that's 2 times 4, 2 times 2. So I could pull out a group of 2s because there's a pair right there. So 3 times 2 times what's left over, this 2 right here, 
square root of 2 plus 3 to the square root of 2. Well, 3 times 2 is 6 square root of 2 plus 3 square root of 2. And now I have like uh, radicals. So 6 plus 3 is 9 square root of 2. And that's my simplest radical form. All right, we can still do the same thing with cubics. I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to break both of these down and try to get them to be on common ground. So let's see if we can do that. Uh, 2 times 12, 2 times 6, 2, uh, 2 times 3. All right, and then, so that's a, a pair of 2s are going to be able to come out, and then I'm going to be left with a 6. Or I could think about that in terms of, yeah, I think that's probably going to be the easiest thing. Oh, wait, I almost made a mistake. It's actually cubic, so instead of this pulling out a pair of 2s, I'm actually going to be able to pull out a trio of 2s. So I can rewrite this as 2 cube root of what was left over 3. All right, plus sign, bring it down. I'm going to break it down again. All right, uh, I know that 81 is 9 times 9, but those aren't prime numbers, so I could break those down themselves. 3 times 3 and 3 times 3. Well, I could get these 3 out of there, and then I'd just be left with that 1, 3. So that's a 3 out front, cube root of 3. And look, now I've got like radicals, so I could combine. 2 plus 3 is 5 cube root of 3. All right. Okay, multiplying radicals is um, you don't need like radicals, kind of like when we were uh, multiplying. Um, we didn't need like terms to be able to multiply. So just keep it in mind here, what we end up doing is we multiply the coefficients out front and we multiply what's underneath the radical. The only thing that you need to be very careful of is that the roots of the radicals that you're multiplying need to be the same or there's going to be some converting that you're going to have to deal with. All right, so because these are both square roots, we're in good shape. So it's going to look like this, negative 3 times 6. Those are the coefficients and they're on the outside. And then I've got the square root of 3 times 2. That's your inside. Okay, negative 3 times 6 is negative 18. And then I've got the square root of 6. Last step before I'm done, I've got to make sure, are there any factors of 6 that are perfect squares? If there's not, then I'm done. If there are, I have to break it down and pull them out. There's not, so I'm finished with this problem. Let's give you an example of something else. So the 3 doesn't have anything to multiply with. I mean, there's understood 1, but 1 times 3 is just 3, so we're going to have that here. But then we do have to multiply the two radicals because they are both square roots. So that's going to be like the square root of 8 times 2, like that. So then that's 3 times the square root of 16. And now 16 is a perfect square. So we actually can pull out the pair of 4s that are the factors of that. So because the square root of 16 is 4, I can rewrite it like this. The square root of 16 is 4, so 3 times 4 is now 12.